Hello children, myself Anindita Banerjee back again with my second online class of science of standard 5 of the first chapter. Now in my first video I had done till germination. I shall continue from there. Now let me repeat once again what is germination. Germination is the process by which a baby plant or seedling grows from a seed in the presence of air, water and warmth or sunlight. Now I told you in my first online class that uh, if any one of the condition is missing, the seed will not germinate into a new plant. So all the three conditions should be fulfilled that is air, water and sunlight or warmth. Now I will be showing you a corn seed from your book. Now this is a corn seed. Is it visible? Okay, this is a corn seed. Now it has also a cotyledon and a seed coat. Now I told you before the function of the cotyledon is to store food and function of the seed coat is to protect the baby plant. Now I shall go to the fourth page of your science book. Now in fourth page we have uh, about germination once again. Now again I repeat the three conditions which should be fulfilled for proper germinations are air, water and warmth. Now the baby root it grows downward into the soil and forms the root and the baby shoot it grows out from the soil to from the stem leaves and flowers okay thus we see that seeds need adequate amount of air that is ample adequate the word adequate means ample amount of air water and proper temperature to germinate and if any of the conditions is not fulfilled the seed will not germinate. Now some <coughs> seeds are not healthy and they cannot grow and some seeds they do not get the favorable conditions to grow into adult plant. The favorable conditions I told you before that is the air, water and warmth and certain seeds are even destroyed by rain, excessive heat or certain seeds are eaten by animals such as mice and birds. Therefore, they cannot germinate. Now, we come to a new concept of seed dispersal. Now, I told you before that seeds, they need sufficient sunlight, air and water to grow into a healthy plant. So, they must be scattered away from each other so that they do, the plants are not congested. If they are congested or they grow too close to, the, to each other, they will not create proper amount of air, water and sunlight. Thus, they should be scattered in such a manner that they create, get the correct amount of air, water and warmth. And the process by which seeds are scattered away from the parent plant is called seed dispersal. I repeat again. The process by which seeds are scattered away from the parent plant is called seed dispersal. Now, I told you before that seeds should be scattered so that they do not grow close to each other. As because if they grow close to each other, they will not create proper amount of air, water and sunlight to grow. Now, Seeds are dispersed in different ways. They may be carried by wind, they may, carry, they may be carried by water or animals. And these three are the agents of dispersal. What do you mean by agents of dispersal? They help in the process of dispersal. Now which factors help in dispersal? That is air, water or animals. Some plants also expel their seeds explosively. That means they burst open. When they burst open, they fall in somewhere other place 
and where the seed falls it germinate over there now we will come to the different methods of seed dispersal first i will discuss about dispersal by wind now there are certain plants such as maple cotton dandelions they have seeds that are very light and these these features of these seeds help them to be dispersed by wind as because these seeds are very light when the wind blows they they fall into some other parts where it falls a new plant comes out from there from the soil and certain plants such as cotton and dandelion seeds have very fine and long hair around them which they can be easily carried by the wind and some of the plants such as drumstick jarkanda and maple they have wings which help them to float in the air this also helps in dispersal by wind